You're watching the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper on ABC Sports. Florida leads it. Coach Tuberville standing by with Jack Arut, so let's go to Jack. All right, Coach, so how do you turn this around for the Auburn Tigers? Well, hadn't much gone, gone our way, Jack. We, uh, we played hard. Defensively, we made a couple mistakes. We didn't tackle very well. We knew that was going to happen, but... Uh, we're going to have to tackle better this half. We're going to have to probably three-man rush a little bit more, drop back. Hopefully Steve gets a little impatient and throws the ball. Now, how about offensively? Because you've been fits and starts there. Well, we, we, you know, it's been hit and miss. We've been making plays. They're not giving us the big play. They're going to make us earn it, make us drive the ball down the length of the field, and, and we're just making too many mistakes. I guess that's from having the week off. But if we'll hold on to the football and get a couple of turnovers, we'll get back in the game. Brent? You know, it's interesting, Jack and uh, Gary, as we take a look at the first half stats here presented by Dr. Pepper as part of our SEC championship coverage. The points off turnovers have been killing Auburn in this game as the Gators have scored three touchdowns. But, you know, Gary, the, the point that Tuberville makes, I hope Steve gets in pain. Now, wait a minute. That's how Steve plays again. He's going to throw the ball in well, second he, half. He is, but I, I can see the strategy. Drop three guys, uh, drop, rush three guys, drop eight pack. But I think Tommy hit it right on the head. You have to tackle. He knew going into this game that if they did not tackle well because they don't have great matchup cornerbacks playing zone, if you let him catch a little hook, it go 66 yards. You're dead on offense. 222 yards in the first half in offense, but putting it on the carpet three times, that's deadly against him. Absolutely. Easter. And the other point to make about the safeties back there, they may not have the speed no. that you need to hang with the Gator receivers. And, and that is a matchup that's coming more and more into football. It's already there in the pros, but colleges are catching on. Just because you guy got a guy double covered, if you see it's a safety, throw it at him. And that's what Grossman did a beautiful job of reading the coverages and going to the receiver he wanted to throw the ball. And he didn't lay it up. Boom, he hit him. Now, Florida gets to handle the ball. Ratliff is back there with Shepard to start the second half. So it will be the Gators with the first possession of the second half. Duval with the ball on the tee at the 35-yard uh, line. free and a penalty flag is thrown on the return Shepard bringing it out to the 40 yard line let's take a look at those three touchdown passes for Rex Grossman here in the first half he hit Caldwell to put him on the board and then the 66 yarder that Gary referred to when they could not catch it and finally it was Gaffney for the third one and that represents the 21 points for the Gators. And the last one was against the safety, number 31, Page. And that's the difference. When I was brought up throwing the ball, if you had a guy double covered, you were supposed to go away from him. Nowadays, they're telling quarterbacks that if you've got a safety matchup, we see it with Randy Moss all the time in the NFL, go at him. They're playing safety because they're not good with the ball in the air. So Grossman was 11 of 18 for 172 yards. He did have one interception to go with those three touchdown passes Graham is back he carried five times in the first half for 66 yards and DeMarco McNeil makes the uh, stop as we take a look at the uh, possession chart well last time it was five for five for a touch I mean this time he went three for four he almost got benched three for four three touchdown passes that ain't good enough <laughs> Of course, they had the big sack when uh, McNeil did not pick up that fumbled sack, and that could have been a big turnaround in the game also in the first half. So Spurrier starts the second half with Hagerbrook as his slot man. Caldwell and Gaffney are the two outside receivers. They're on second down. Five seconds on the play clock, and now three. And here is Graham to the 28-yard line. Again, close to another first down. So Ernest Graham, a sophomore from Fort Myers, outstanding baseball player, good friend of point guard Teddy Dupay. In fact, they're roommates. He got the start here today, and uh, he has been a force. Brent, the two tailbacks or running backs for Florida now combined have rushed for over 100 yards in this game. Now the sack 
has been taken off that rushing yardage as the team. But the two tailbacks running for over 100 yards so far in the game, that is good news for Florida and why everything's going. You look at this pass chart, nothing deep, nothing deep. And that's been the strategy, the zone forced them to throw underneath. But look what's happened. Grossman has done a good job of throwing the ball underneath. But remember that one in the middle right there where he hit two for five, a short one that went 66 yards up the pipe. When you play a deep zone, you must tackle well after the catch. Shannon Snell operates at guard instead of Thomas Moody. There's a late handoff, bounced ball on the carpet. Auburn signaling that they have recovered the loose ball as Grossman, instead of just going down on it, You're right. continued to try and hand the ball off. He and there is the second turnover of the game for Florida. He should have just wrapped it up. He made two mistakes on the play. He gets tripped as he comes away as the guard or the center, somebody, the left, right guard steps on him, and then he tries to hand it off while he's going down. It was third down and a turnover that if Auburn converts, could get life back into this crowd in their football team. So McNeil, number 92, who failed to wrap up his first opportunity, comes up with this one. Number 92 making the most of his second chance. And now Ben Laird and the Tigers will try to strike. Opening up with a tight formation. Two tight ends. A pitch to Johnson on a stretch and nothing doing is number 50. Marcus Okendo Johnson. The sophomore from Rockledge makes the stop. Well, although Auburn put up 222 yards, you can see it wasn't pretty. First play of the game, a little short pass, fumbled. It went bad from there, and only right at the end there, after the interception, they were able to get three points. That is a bad chart of possession. If you look at halftime, you say, guys, we moved the ball, but we killed ourselves putting it on the carpet. Six defensive backs on the field for this second down and 14. From the shotgun, Lear, Mitchell trips him up and sacks him at the 30-yard line. You can see Lear can barely move right now. That hip is bothering me. He's not the most mobile to begin with. Looking at his pass chart around the field, nothing like to throw more to his right, obviously, so far. But nothing really big in this game. The problem for this for this team for Auburn is no yards after the catch. They catch the ball, they don't make any big plays afterward. So given their field position, this has to be so disappointing for Auburn. They're moving in the wrong direction. Third down and 16 from the gun. With flare to the big fullback, Evans. Evans breaks free again. the first down on his own and the young man Heath Evans the junior from West Palm Beach has become the story of this game for Auburn absolutely and remember this is the guy that gave up so much for Rudy Johnson in this offense he was supposed to be the star the guy from Florida came to Auburn the leading ball carrier a year ago Ben Lear just gives up on this play there's no way Florida should allow a fullback to rip off 22 yards on a flare pass on third and long. He sets up in front of Johnson here on first and goal. Johnson behind the block. And the Gators swarm all over Rudy. Yeah, well, that time I think Keith Evans was a little too tired to find his block. John Hope, defensive coordinator, has to be beside himself. Steve Spurrier said to Jack Aru, we just got to tackle better. And all of a sudden, they come out and give up a third and long on a swing pass. And Alex down on the turf there at the 10-yard line. One of the players the Gators cannot afford to lose. You know, we're talking about number 44, Heath Evans. Played down at King's Academy and uh, out of West Palm Beach. And twice, number 44 was an all-state selection down there. He rushed for uh, better than 2,200 yards and 39 touchdowns as a senior. And ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. Chevy trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. 
Burger King got the urge and Sprint PCS the clear alternative to cellular Alex Brown still down at the uh, at the 10 yard line here Let's see if we might be able to find out left side of the screen here looks like he gets bent backwards yes right over he's got his knee to the ground and then the whole pile lands on top of him and uh, I'm not even going to guess, but usually that's when you, get, you flex your back or your knee on one of those things like that. So we'll take a break and come back to the SEC championship presented by Dr. Pepper. Time out. Now they're tending to Alex's right leg over there on the sideline. We certainly hope that is not serious. He seemed to be in some pain as he uh, hobbled off. Meanwhile, number 35, Kennard Ellis moves into the D-line for the Gators here. Second down and goal for Auburn. Evans empties the backfield. And Lear in trouble. Shakes one. Incomplete on the pass. Derek Chambers that time was also closing in number 91. Tried to throw a delay pass this time. Everybody going long and a one-man route to the tight end. And uh, this time, Florida jumped in and Laird had nowhere to go with the ball until right at the end when he tried to dump, dump it to Robinson. You know, that was Derek Chambers who made such a big play, battling his way in with that swim move. Great use of his hands. Here's third down and go. Low snap inside, handoff, Evans bounces free, not this time. And you know, we saw that great move by Derek Chambers. And I asked him to demonstrate how he tried to dominate offensive linemen. And here's what he said. What we try to do is get your hands up under the pads. And, uh, you know, coaches always teach us that the lowest man always wins. So you want to come off and, you know, really shoot your hands up in those guys. And so the lowest man is going to win. So and you want to be able to extend and control them. Oh, he sure did that two snaps ago, didn't he? He was the lowest man coming through. I think very smartly here. Uh, you can't go away with no points. Some points on the board. Make it a 15-point game. The ball's already kicked one. This is a 21-yarder for him. And he's made two field goal attempts. So slowly, slowly, Auburn's inching back. 21-6, timeout. Next Saturday, Tiger Woods and David Duvall team up to represent the United States at the World Golf Championships, EMC World Cup, two Eastern and Pacific, right here on ABC. And right now, the Gators just a little bit uneasy. They've turned it over their last two possessions. Remember, Steve was upset. He was talking to Jack and Ruth at the end of the first half. They'd thrown an interception. Now they fumble. And on the series before that, the second half, they've hunted. So they've been unsuccessful in their last three series. Shepard is back trying to give him a lift here. Duval. He dropped it right on the goal line last time. And this one on the four-yard line, Ratliff. Surrounded, comes back on the middle to the 20-yard line. Well, Steve has started to try to feature that running game, but I think if you've got the type of receivers he has in the mid-match in the secondary, I think they're going to go back to throwing those curl routes and those quick passing rhythm routes that Grossman is so good at. Another thing has to go through his mind right now is you don't know how serious that injury is to Alex Brown over there receiving medical attention. You want to give the defense a break if you can. You'd love to have a few first downs. Obviously, a touchdown most important, but you'd like to dominate a little bit here. And Grossman coming out from the 20 yard line. He's going to do the Spurrier thing. Middle, got Gaffney, and Gaffney's got a first down at the 35 yard line. And let's check in on Alex Brown. Uh, Jack Aru, what are you hearing? Well, Brent, they're continuing to work on Alex Brown behind me. The doctor has told me that he has suffered a severe sprain of his right ankle. They have his tape off, they have the, the shoe off right now. They say we're going to evaluate it, but he isn't going to be in for a couple of series at the, at the least, Brent. Yeah, exactly. Glad to hear, though, in a way that it's an ankle and not a knee. I know that sounds silly, but I was afraid about that knee. First down and ten. Here's a handoff to Gillespie. And uh, Gillespie for two, three yards on that carry. 
When you take a look at the run yards here today, Gary, uh, yep. Florida's holding their head in there now. Yeah, but since they started running the ball, they've been getting yards, but not points. That's been, they need points now. I think a better matchup for Florida is throwing the ball against the secondary than running the ball against this defense that is only average at giving up 90 yards a game coming into the game. Successful, yes. Points, no. Spoken like a quarterback. <laughs> Second down Steve and loves seven. Me. Steve loves me, doesn't he? <laughs> Grossman's in the gun. Fires back, and that was a beautiful look off that time to Aaron Walker. Steve Spurrier and his quarterbacks worked on just that for well about 30 minutes at practice on that short drop off come back quickly and drop it off this was a design play they're going to fake the quick screen to the left out here to a wide receiver the tight end is going to delay and go right out when you're playing zone teams you delay the tight end fake one way all along that ball was coming at the tight end that was a design call all the way and 16 yards now at the auburn 46 yard line for florida Here's the run with Graham. Breaks a tackle, and he picks up about nine yards before he is forced out. And a reminder, coming up next, Championship Saturday continues here with the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Undefeated Oklahoma needs a victory against Kansas State for a trip to the national championship. That's next, only on ABC, home of the Bull Championship Series. And uh, my turn. Who do you like in that? Not Mr. <laughs> Trying to trap me. Yes. Uh, you know, I've got to go with OU. The, the month of October still lingers with me. I don't know how the weather's going to affect Josh Heifel. Here's a handoff to Graham. Graham, I should say, for the first time. You know, Gary, they keep saying weather's going to affect Oklahoma and this and that, but I keep right. thinking Josh Heifel's from Aberdeen, South Dakota. You ever been to Aberdeen, South Dakota it's in the middle cold. of the winter? Yeah. <laughs> I heard there's 22 inches of snow up there right now. I was just afraid you had a condo there or something like that. You couldn't pick the game. <laughs> I can pick any game part of it. Not very successfully, I might add. First out in 10. <laughs> to the outside, it's still two deep safeties. John Lovett, defensive coordinator, won't crack. He won't move up. Grossman couldn't find an open target. Now sideline, and he throws it away. Second down and 10. Now, I'll tell you what Steve is telling him right now. Throw to your check downs. If the deep guy's not there, those backs are standing right in front of you. He talked about that, that to us yesterday, Brent. Rex still wants that the big one isn't there to roll out to his right, and then I get him in the film room and say, now, Rex, what should you have done there? He says, Coach, he's going to throw him the check down. He said, well, we'll see if he can do it this Saturday. Eight of the 21 against these Gators. And they singe a lot of team for the touchdown passes. There's four wides. Taylor Jacobs off to the left with Hagerbrook. All well in Gaffney. And now Grossman going to drop that middle screen off. And Auburn jumped it. They blew that play up right away with Thomas, number 54, the redshirt freshman from Perry, Georgia, who played a big game against Alabama. Very good play. job that time by Thomas reading that play. Uh, you see a lot of the shotgun teams, Oklahoma has it, where they just pitch it real quick. It's a middle screen, and the offensive line that time is responsible for that middle linebacker to clean him out, and running back can go a long way. They put the Gators in third and 12 here, leading 21 to six. the 17-yard line. What a slick receiver he is. That's 20 more yards for the freshman of the year. First of all, you're going to see him come inside and then back outside the two deep safeties. This is exactly the way you want to do it. You put one guy out in the flat to hold this man, and then you run this guy outside, and that's as easy as you do it. You hold one of them up, you throw behind him, but watch Grossman. He takes a hit. He holds on to the last second. And he takes a hit with middle linebacker Spencer Johnson. Boy, they were giving Gaffney 10 yards, and he curled up underneath and took that sideline route. And here comes Graham. He pounds his way to the 12-yard line. And the 
Of course, a reminder that at the conclusion of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. It's the SEC championship game presented by Dr. Pepper. The winner will move on to the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Could wind up playing Miami. Also could wind up playing Oklahoma. That's why tonight is so big. If Kansas State beats Oklahoma, then Kansas State automatically goes to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and Oklahoma has to wait for a wild card bid and of course that would send Miami and Florida State into the FedEx Orange Bowl they then would play for the national championship now on second down for the Gators Grossman makes his call off in time slant and incomplete Hagebrook and the Caldwell the two receivers. Well, he very easily that time read the blitz look, but did not get any protection up front. You see, it's very simple. Nobody back here. He knows it's going to be. He's going to get a hitch there and coming out behind it. He knows it. All he needs is a little blocking up front, and he can easily throw this. Nobody blocks the guy coming right up in his face. And Grossman does a nice job of not taking a sack on the play. The Gators will go over to the sideline because we've got a timeout. So we'll take a break. Florida leads Auburn, 21 to six. While you were away, Alex Brown was up walking a bit on that ankle, but he's also discovered just a little tenderness on the outside of that knee, and the trainer is tending to it now. But the story here is the offensive line, and there is Moody who's returned to the game, and he fanned on that last block. Didn't pick up the man he was supposed to. Third down and coming after Grossman puts it up for grabs. Touchdown! Touchdown! Hagerbrook! He's a courageous young man. He'll take his punishment and still deliver it. Reminded me of Josh Heifel. When you know the blitz is coming, you know it's one-on-one, -on -one and you throw it up in the air. You don't worry about safeties at that time. And Grossman had did it the whole drive, waited till the last second to throw the ball. Tossed it up there and says, my guy's better than your guy, and we're going to come down with him. That's his fourth touchdown pass of the game. Here is Jeff Chandler, the junior from Jacksonville, to tack on the extra point. Which he does. Breathing room. And one stat to remember. The Florida Gators, under Steve Spurrier, when they are leading at the half, folks, their record is 103 wins and only four defeats. They are lethal with a lead. You can see it. Grossman reads it. He knows the blitz is coming there, and he's got man-to-man -to, -man to the outside across the board. Four on four. He says, I can feel it. Four on four. I'm just going to lay it up and let my guy play post, keep him on his back. That's an excellent job by Hogabrook to keep his guy. Watch this. A little bit of a twist, and then he just, like a basketball player, keep him on your back, catch the ball, and when you wait till the last second, like Heupel, you'll take that hit. Big linebacker that time came on him, he just tossed it up in the air. So Grossman drives the Gators 80 yards in 11 plays, 426, and Brian Huggerbrook, the junior from Wildwood, with the touchdown catch for Steve Spurrier's Gators. <laughs> and now you know the story, especially down in Gainesville, and he's had pain in that back, hadn't he? And this is the only senior class that he's had that has not yet won an SEC championship ring. The only one. They are playing for a ring today, and they're playing hard. Steve does a good job of selling the importance of the SEC championship, too. He said it's huge. That's why we play in this league, and we want to win championships. zone for Jeff Chandler so here in the Georgia Dome a capacity crowd the Florida Gators making the most of turnovers in the first half and now after a made field goal they drive 80 yards Jack Arut and they lead it 28 to 6 and Grant when you look at the performance of Brian Hockerbrook this year he says one of the reasons why he's a better receiver is the position he played during spring ball the uh, Gators decided to put him over on the defense side of the ball Played a little strong safety, played a little linebacker. He said it helped me to appreciate what a wide receiver must do. Now the Gators out with their defense against Ben Laird and the Auburn Tigers. Nice fake. Buys time, and it is complete to Clifton Robinson for an Auburn first down at the 39-yard line. 
again, Auburn has been able to move the ball effectively, but no touchdowns to show for it. And Ben Leard says, uh, boy, I've had enough of this every time I let go. And, and a nice job to pull off the tackle by Bullard that time. Did not want to get a roughing the passer. He almost kind of touched him and said, excuse me, Ben. One of the John Hoke goals today was to hold Rudy Johnson under 100 yards. He's gained only 54. 15 carries, 54 yards for number 32. First down and 10. Here he comes again, and they are all over him. Warren blows the play up, and he's out of bounds. What great penetration by number 61, Gerard Warren, the junior defensive tackle who looks like he can blow up a lot of offensive lines. Yeah, you can watch it right over the center this time. He's tilted to this side and makes it a very tough block for the center running into that tilted nose. How do you expect that center, Nolan, I think number 55, to handle that type of player with a tilted nose? Very difficult assignment. Should be run in the other direction in that situation. Boy, he needs some help from the guard. Excuse me. Exactly. Exactly, Gary. That would help him a lot. Second down and 18 for Leard and the Tigers. Four wide receivers. And again, Warren was blowing up the pocket. He gets it into Evans' hand. And this time, the Gators know that they've got a load. And Bullard and three of his buddies jumped on him. And now Leard yeah, is taking a tremendous off. pounding. It is possible that Daniel Cobb is going to have to come on in here. Well, a, a mixture of blitzes. They're zone blitzes. That's really the style for John Hoke. Come from different angles. This time it's Ellis, number 35, a linebacker safety type. And this time as Laird, Laird lets it go, he's wrapped on his ankle. And, uh, boy, this has been uh, just not fun to watch. Ben Laird in his last SEC game uh, has, has taken a beating in this football game. Kennard Ellis. Is the Gator in uh, some obvious pain down here is the young man Daniel Cobb number 16 getting ready on the sideline he'll have to come in for at least at least one play so we'll take a break and we'll be back in Atlanta well Laird is still receiving some attention and that's Warren now receiving some ice over there, and uh, so he's nicked up. Let's remind everybody that the Kansas City Chiefs battled the New England Patriots on Monday Night Football, live at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. So we'll have that game on Monday Night Football for you, the Chiefs and the Patriots. Then Sunday night on ESPN, the Packers will face the Bears at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific time. Uh, Gary, you're telling me that the uh, the Bear assistant coach probably hey, going to hey, wind hey, up at hey, BYU? Yep, I think so. Oh, They're going to yeah. be right there. Yes, I yeah. think that's going to happen. Gary Croton is going to be in the running there. I think that's BYU, and they yeah, good, good choice. Good I think yeah. And uh, how about the young man from TCU who I don't know who's moving to Alabama? We got a lot I of think, Bama fans. I think boys. Dennis Franchione is one of the outstanding coaches in college football. I, I, I think he is a solid coach, defensively, offensively. You won't turn a, a, the ball over with him. Kind of reminds me of the Randy Walker type. You mm -hmm. do it right, you do it every time, and you'll win games. So now it looks like they're going to make another switch this time. Jeff and Cox. Jeff Klein and not Cobb. So low snap as Jeff Klein gets the call, puts it into Rudy's hands on a drop off, and Manuel wrestles him down. That is short of the first down. So Brent, it is Klein who gets the call here for Auburn. Brent, the shotgun snap today has been so bad for Auburn. It has really thrown their timing off. Again, the ball at his feet. Klein makes a good play to catch it. But when you do that, you have to take your eyes off downfield, and it really discombobulates you. And then you can see there's still quite a ways for the first down, and Dauber elects to punt. And that first and ten line is brought to you by Pacific Life. Ratliff is back deep. And Damon Duval from Chattanooga handles the kicking and the punt. Oh, what a beauty this is. Going on into the end zone. Duval just decided to whack one. Took out his frustrations and it was a 52 yarder. Let me show you how you can give up 28 points. We talked about Dell Game Solutions. I think I was right. Get in rhythm. Obviously, they did that. Force a blitz. They forced the blitz and made him pay. They did that. There has been no Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. And this poor tackling by the Auburn defense, I'm a genius. I had it right down there all the way. It's the best I've ever done. What do I win? What do I win? Pretty good, huh? Well, you can, I get a, can I have a try for that field goal? You weren't running to that airplane. I'd take you with me to Chuck and Jill. <laughs> See my friend Greg Sager over there. All right. he take care of you. First down now. He goes for now to hand off. And Graham explodes. Bumble. Loose ball. Auburn's got it. Auburn recovers.
Gives it their football at the Gator 48-yard line. Rodney Creighton recovers the fumble. Well, when they don't turn the ball over, they score. I mean, three, two turnovers. This is the third. Graham goes over 100 yards rushing on this play. Just an isolation play. Following the fullback, bust into the uh, secondary this time. Pop, ball pops out loose. And Graham goes over 100. And Brent, you had a number. I'm going to give you one. When a Florida running back rushes for over 100 yards, Steve Spurrier is 61 and 1. Amazing. Jeff Klein, number nine, is his game right now as far as Auburn is concerned. Here comes that end around. Here comes Carter. Good block on Ellis that time. And Carter. Whacked out of bounds on that far side. <laughs> and I mean, it was Robert Cromarty laying a pad to him. Whew. What a hit. Let's check in with Jack Arood on our injured quarterback. Jack. Well, Brent, they continue to work on Ben Laird here on the sidelines of Auburn. And what they've determined is it's not an ankle injury. It is a foot injury. They have taken the tape off and they have taken the shoe off. They are now icing him down. But Brent, you're not going to see Ben back for quite some time. That's a lot of wax and sex. Another Georgia product. Jeff Klein, just like Laird. Second down and short. And Evans got the first down. Keeps on bulldozing ahead. And uh, he has rushed for more yards here today yep. than Johnson. 61 to 46. Evans with the advantage. And they've been inspirational yards. Also, when he caught the ball or when he's run the ball, he's run with abandonment and done a great job for this team. He also has three receptions for 39 yards. So when he's had the ball, as you look at it right there, whoa, we're good down the graphics thing. That's 100 yards running and catching the ball. He's my leader. First down. Play fake. Klein's a good one. Got time, and now he completes the ball to Lorenzo Diamond. First down, Auburn inside the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at what Evans has done. And notice the power that this young man runs with here, Gary. 61 yards yep. rushing and 39 receiving. And inspirational yards. He's not going to stop. He's the leader of the football team. He's the one who sacrificed the most coming into the season for Rudy Johnson. And he's the one that's giving the most to his coach today in this championship. Given Auburn now a first down at the Gator 22-yard line. He trots off to the side, and Johnson's back in the game. Total yards, Auburn with 295. It has not been a problem, them moving the ball. It has been a problem getting in the end zone. We talked about that before the game. It's not just yards, it's points when you play against Spurs. Incomplete, and uh, the receiver, Ronnie Daniels, was turned around on the play and uh, didn't look back at the quarterback. So it's understandable they're probably not yet in sync, and the Tuberville can only say, well, oh, my, what am I looking at? I'm telling you what now, what Daniels is saying is Cromarty, number 25, is squatting on me. I can't run a 10-yard out when he's squatting at nine yards. Coach, I got to go deep on him. Robert Cromarty right there. He was kind of picked on by Chris Winky couple weeks ago at Florida State, but who doesn't Chris Winky pick on with that pass? Second down and ten. Eight men in the box again for Florida. Here's Klein. High, incomplete. Daniels, the intended receiver. And Benny Alexander, number 30. In the cover corner over there, and he is the fourth Florida player who will who will have Steve find out from the NFL what they're interested in and he might be at the end of this season. I missed the third. Alex, Gerard, uh, Benny, who's the fourth? I, I, I can't come up with the fourth one right now. Was it one of the receivers or uh, probably the offensive lineman? Pearson or Walker? That's what, Kenyatta Walker. That's what it is. Kenyatta, the yeah, offensive that's tackle. He, he's got a pretty good future, too. Third down. Throws in zone, got an open man, touchdown! Uh -huh. No 
Oh, he dropped it. Todd Johnson. Daniels was right there, and Todd Johnson made a great move late. Right, Todd Johnson got there. Remember, Todd Johnson out of the Florida game really cost Florida a touchdown when Minnis got that touchdown. But right in between strides, Klein spots it. The ball hangs just enough, and Johnson comes across, and just as Daniels catches it, <laughs> he knocks it away. He's got to hold that ball. Well, it looked like he was stripped to me by Todd Johnson just at impact right there. Of course, we all want him to catch him, but that was a great play by Todd Johnson. Who's playing with a broken hand. An injury he suffered against Florida State. He has been a leader of that secondary all season long. And here's Klein. In zone again open, but he overthrew him that time. Ronnie Daniels was wide open again, and Jeff Klein missed him. And coach says, come on, Jeff. He was all alone. Right. You know, Tommy's not much of a hands-on coach. He allows his offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator to pretty much call all the plays. But he'll get in your face. You mentioned he learned from some of the best. And some of the best say, you can play, but when I put you out there, you better make plays. And that's what he just told Jeff Klein. So the ball goes over to the Gators on downs. The first one hung a bit. Oh, boy. That, that, that's one of those uh, that Laird is going to get fired off. And it looked like, as Jack said, one of those sprained foot, those arches that really, really do not get better quickly. First down, and uh, Grossman changes up. And I believe the uh, game clock had zeroed out. And I wonder if it even started. I didn't look at it counting now. When I looked, it was zero, and uh, we'll see. Maybe he ran it out. That was a dead ball delay yep. by the offense. Then he's five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. He can't believe it. Yeah, that's always one of the toughest ones for the quarterback and the coach. On a change of possession, those referees mark the ball very quickly, and if you're not ready, you can get caught. 103 left here in the third. on to the ball at the 30-yard line. Picking up about seven yards before Simmons brings him down for the Tigers. Florida scored the ball, but the last four possessions, you can see it, one touchdown. Otherwise, they fumbled it. And Brent, remember the punt that they had prior to that? There was a fumbled sack, and very fortunately, Florida was able to get the ball back, or they would have had another turn. Second down and three for the Gators. Toss play. Graham cut off. Nothing doing. McNeil, 92, is in on that play again. And Graham's helmet comes off a few times in the football game. You know the one thing about the Florida Gators, the one thing that Steve Spurrier wants to avoid above all else is that three-game swoon of a year ago when after losing to Florida State in the swamp, they were beaten badly in this game by Alabama, and then Michigan State defeated them at the buzzer in the Citrus Bowl. But Steve told us this is a different team, a different attitude. That will not happen, and it certainly is not today. Time out. There was Grossman on the bad handoff, turning it over. And then he came back to Gaffney and threw this strike. It's 28-6, Florida leading Auburn. On your side, health specialist Lee Jordan, only on News Channel 5. You're watching the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper on ABC Sports. Well, certainly the Florida Gators have taken advantage of their opportunities here, Gary. Well, the, the mismatch in the secondary is pretty obvious, and Grossman throwing the ball with pressure in his face has been very impressive. It'll be very tough for somebody to beat this guy out, but Steve has been known to do it before. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Rex back again, and Gillespie on the field, down at the 33-yard line, and we can take a look at our stats through three quarters, and uh, the Dr. Pepper statistics. 
So much fun going out the, with those guys for dinner the other night. And the, the yeah, great it's commissioner. more fun when they pick the check up. Exactly right I was here. the commissioner. I think uh, <laughs> Mr. Kramer did that. Well, whoever it was, it was a lot of fun. As you look at it, you really can't see here the story of the game. No Rudy, no tackling in the secondary for Auburn again. It looks like they're mismatched. Their athletes are not as good as Florida is athletes, and that's led to the score being in the case. Here comes Gillespie again on a bit of a delay and a cutback and nothing doing on first down. Thomas makes the stop. So Gillespie off the bench has rushed five times for 34 yards. Rand, I don't think when we do Florida, we talk enough about these two tackles, Pearson and Walker. These two big guys had such a great game last week again, two weeks ago against Florida State. And now in this game, they just aren't allowing anybody from the outside to get the ghost. And Gillespie cut off that time. Thomas again, that red shirt freshman from Perry, Georgia. Well, speaking of Pearson, I ask him who is the toughest rusher for him to block at left tackle. Give a listen. Some guy that real quick around the corner, but then he can dip back inside as well. Because a lot of times you're one on one and you know you got the quarterback's blind side. And if they hit him from the back, it's going to hurt him pretty good. Only a sophomore, and he's done an outstanding job in the two games that we've been around the game. Yeah, Brent, you know, I was looking back to some of the high school reports about these guys when they recruited. Steve has done such a great job of recruiting these players and rated as the best two tackles coming out two years ago was Pearson and the tackle for Florida State, the big guy over there, Brent, Brent Williams. And they, they are just great players, and they turned out as expected, both of them. Yeah, both outstanding players. Florida State, of course, headed down to the FedEx Orange Bowl. They'll play for a national championship against either Oklahoma or Miami. Third down and 11. Here comes the draw, and the Gators are forced to punt. And Thomas has been all over the place defensively here in this series for the Tigers. And Alan Ryan will come onto the field here for Steve Spurrier. Real funny watching Steve on the sideline. He was very upset with Rex. It's almost as if he should have checked for the pass play. Usually when you're running plays like that, he has got a run and a pass on it. He's going, no, no, no. I had gone deep on that play. you got to learn to run the offense. I've got a bunch of guys coming in behind you. <laughs> and you know, you know, Jesse showed why he's a senior. He, when he sees things like that, make sure you walk by. Yeah, that's coach right. Might see your number, and you might get a few snaps. The only, the only a senior <laughs> would do that. Freshman, he wouldn't go. He wouldn't go close to Spurrier. I long. think uh, Rex is pretty tough-minded, though. I don't think Steve's going to get in his head. Nobody back. They rushed up, and uh, the Gators are going to down this punt. Didn't get it. Oh. Into the end zone by inches. A 66-yarder. But he was given chase. No timeout here in Atlanta. Roy Kramer, the SEC commissioner, and one of the great friends of college football. He brought this championship game in here to Atlanta. He's done so many things. And you know, Commissioner, I just want to tell you, ABC's done this game for nine years. We have so much enjoyed our affiliation with the SEC. I finally managed to convince Keith Jackson to stay out west so I can come <laughs> here and do this. But I want to tell you, it is a wonderful show, and our friends at CBS will do a great job with it. Well, it has been a great uh, nine-year roll with uh, ABC. You people have done a great job. We're glad to finally get you and Gary here, you know, to show you what Southeastern Conference football is really about, <laughs> especially Gary, because he's that old Midwesterner. But uh, no, it is. It's been a great uh, series. Uh, Another great game, you know, Florida's tough. You don't make mistakes against Florida and beat Florida, as you can see in this ball game today. But nevertheless, another great game. Stick right with us here, Commissioner, for a couple other questions on hand as we watch uh, Rudy. And I you know you're an old football guy. You were a coach yourself, and uh, you had to feel that the, the turnover thing was the big story in the first half. Turnover, no question. You know, I, I want to run down there and tell big old lineman to fall on the ball. Don't try to pick up and run with oh, it. You gotta, yeah. I, I've seen more guys try to do that and... and and lose the ball. They had a couple of good opportunities there and lost them both. But uh, that's the breaks of the game. But Florida's a very good football team, very sound. Uh, they've got their act together, uh, good defensively as well as offensively. Well, here's second down now and nine coming up for Jeff Klein, who replaced, and he bottles the snap in there, just on cue, doing what Roy said he should do, is pounce on the ball. That's Roy, right. let me ask you this. Uh, as we uh, take a look, how many teams from the SEC are going to get bowl bits for you this year? Well, I believe eight will, and there's a good shot we get nine. Of course, we have to kind wow. of wait and see what happens tonight. But uh, we had a great season. You know, we didn't have that number one, number two team. 
But we have probably better football from the top to the bottom in this league than we've ever had in the history of the conference. Roy, you get in nine, it's going to be like NHL hockey. Everybody makes the playoffs. <laughs> no, don't put it in that category. <laughs> Every conference should have a Roy Kramer exactly. to get all those teams. Both <laughs> bids here. Third down and 12 now. Put your helmets on right. You get a bowl game in the SEC. That? Another bad snap. This time Klein picks it up in trouble. Drops it off underneath to Evans. And Evans is down at the 24-yard line. So they're uh, forced to punt here. And then, of course, tomorrow we get the, the big announcement. And, right. and what is your feeling about the Miami controversy personally, Roy? Since Miami did beat Florida State, how do you feel about it? Well, we showed uh, when we started that that could happen. Uh, obviously, it's, uh, there's an argument there. There's a controversy. But that's not all bad. But I believe that uh, when it turns out, uh, the system will put the two best teams in the game. Now, you can argue about who won on the field, but Washington has that same argument with the, with the win at Miami. But nevertheless, I think we'll have a great championship game, and who knows, uh, depending on what happens tonight, we may come out with a consensus one and two after all. Yeah, exactly, because that game will still unfold. That's Commissioner, correct. thanks so much for Good coming Good to be by. with you. We're you just have great to have done you. a wonderful job. Thank you, Brent. Great to have you and Gary here. Roy Kramer, the SEC Commissioner. We'll be right back. Well, coming up next, Championship Saturday continues with the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. Undefeated Oklahoma needs a victory against Kansas State for a trip to the National Championship game. That's next only on ABC, home of the Bowl Championship Series. And Rex Grossman handing up big hole Graham, right side, and Graham for a first down to the 43-yard line. And uh, I get the feeling in talking to Commissioner Kramer, he feels that Kansas State has a heck of a chance tonight in that big A game. Well, you can hope, 12, I guess. Huh? Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure that, the, you know, in a funny way, though sometimes the way these things go, if you stumble a couple games before, but you survive, mm -hmm. Bobby Stoop says that's good for our team and we will be better for it. I agree with him. Remember, Bobby Stoops was here, defensive coordinator for years with Steve. John Hope says, I could do the same thing. I'm right here. Grab me. Another year. I'm ready. We'll get ready. First down and 10. Long hand off of the Gators now are working on the clock. And, uh, Jack, what are we hearing uh, from the injury situation with the Gators? Well, with Gerald Warren, the uh, defensive tackle for the Gators, there you can see him. He is not going to be coming back into this game, so the Gators will have to finish it out without him. He seemed to have suffered a strained groin. Right? Yeah, well, might as well rest some of those fellas now for Ken Dorsey and that bunch. If it should wind up that way, or Oklahoma and Josh Heupel, we'll have to see how it unfolds here tonight. Grossman comes up under center, nine and a half minutes. Should Auburn lose again, they'll go play Michigan as we had a whistle for the snap. They'll play Michigan in the Citrus Bowl. Walker flinch that time is going to be a legal procedure on Florida that time. Right tackle, just a little bit of a flinch before the snap. You know, you talk about what the life is playing quarterback for the coach, Steve Spurrier. Now, this is a guy that's thrown touchdown passes all day. He comes to the sideline. What are you doing? What are you doing, Rex? Oh, no, I wouldn't have done it that way. You got to know what you're doing. Really, though, what Steve is doing is he's coaching him. He told us yesterday that if Rex learns the mental part of the game, he's going to be a great one. <laughs> Look at yeah, I, I got to tell you, one of my favorite Steve Spurrier stories, which I found out from Norm Carlson, a long time uh, fan of Florida football and ran the SID department here as Grammy. Do you remember when Paul Horning won the uh, Heisman Trophy? Yep. Nope. Okay. So now Norm Carlson, those people said, well, there's no way we can beat all the publicity Notre Dame gets because Johnny Majors that year had a heck of a right. year and Paul Beatty. So here comes Steve Spurrier in 66. Okay, and he gets the press down and Spurrier against Auburn kicks this field goal when he wasn't the regular field goal kicker. That was a 40-yarder. He waved the regular kicker aside. He told <laughs> Ray Grace, and it wasn't just to win the trophy. Steve said, I just thought I had a little bit longer leg. I yeah. kicked a couple earlier in the year against Northwestern. Well, Norm had the, the writers for the New York Times and the fellows down from New York, and, and that's how Steve Legend. Spurrier Legend. came, and he also got the people in the South to register so they could vote because he didn't want to lose to another Paul Horning situation. Here comes Graham. He pulls his way to the 40-yard uh, line. Our partner with Bob Breezy didn't win it. That's right, and uh, <laughs> let's check in now with John Saunders in New York. Well, Brent, it's time for the Burger King update. Army and Navy again, both with struggling seasons, but Brian Broadwater here goes 32 yards to Brian Williams for the touchdown, open up a 10-point lead. Navy gets their first win of the season, and both Army and Navy finish 1-10. Brent. 
Yeah, what a game that was. Uh, winless Navy team. Always take the underdog, John, in the Army-Navy game. That's uh, that's my advice. From his down our our military needs to be funded with more money. I'm telling you that right now. We need more money for our for service people. And now's the toss to Graham. To the 40-yard line as uh, we hit the half hour here. And a reminder, if you're flipping that dial and you're tired of the court goings on and all that stuff. <laughs> Florida here leads Auburn 28-6 in the SEC Championship presented by Dr. Pepper. The winner will move on to New Orleans at the Nokia Sugar Bowl. And that game is scheduled for the night of January 2nd. And then the next night, the FedEx Orange Bowl. And uh, that'll be down there in South Florida. And, uh, that'll be some new ones down there. Second down. Grossman's thrown for 242 yards, 17 to 26. Draw play with Graham, who's having a huge day. There's a penalty flag. And uh, Graham has become the monster running back in this game. Yeah, usually a lot of those yards come when a team gets up running the ball. Florida gets the big lead, and then Steve starts to run the ball. But in this game, the running game has been good to Steve all game. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Dr. Pepper makes the world taste better. Ford F-Series, the best-selling trucks are built for tough. Chili's Ranch and Filet, tender, juicy, flame grilled, and served on a bed of awesome blossom springs and MSN. Everything you need to feel at home on the web, all in one place. Yeah, you, you know, Gary, you take a look at Graham's numbers. 19, yes. 169 yards rushing the ball. And here's Rudy Johnson down there. 47 yards on 17 well, carries. We, so we, we run knew. the ball and stop the run. Yeah, we, we knew that if Rudy did not have a big game in this football game, it would be tough for Auburn to, to win. Little did we know that they were going to put it on the carpet that many times. That's even more. Uh, number 32, Johnson watching from the sideline. Florida has run the ball here today more than they have passed it. Oh, and here is Gillespie with still another run. When you look at the ratio, they have run about four more times. In fact, exactly four. 30 runs and 26 passes, and we check in now with Jack Aru. Well, Greg, if you ask Steve Spurrier's family, they'll be quick to tell you that Steve is mechanically challenged. His son, Scotty, 13 years of age, proudly set about the task this summer of teaching Dad how to operate the family microwave. When his dad got done, he knew how to do it, and I asked, and Scotty says, you know, one thing about my dad, he's very coachable. Football coach got to learn how to warm his coffee in a microwave. Got to know how to all, do that. All you got to know how to do is work the remote control on TV. <laughs> Come on. That's all you got to do. That's the way I do it. How about the uh, Tommy Tuberville a little bit, though? You know, sometimes you can win too soon. Tommy Tuberville Man, we're has, about that. Uh, you know, you know it hap it's happened before. Mike DeVos, the boys last year won with uh, 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 Alabama. Terry Bowden in 97 won a little bit too much. Expectations rise, but I think it's been very, very good. This has been a great year for Tuberville. He's going to go out and recruit and upgrade the talent, and I think this program's on the right track. Uh, I'm going to argue that there's a significant difference here. I think Auburn's ahead of schedule, and I think Alabama was on schedule, and I still cannot explain that collapse. Well, I mean, that, that team should have contended for a national championship. That's the kind of talent they had over there in Alabama. They'd be ashamed of themselves the way they played this year. That's Just not like Alabama the stock football market team. expectations. Yeah. Timeout. Florida in control. War Eagle. Some of the great fans and uh, college football certainly our colleague Terry Bowden knows about the, uh, the passion over there on the flames that they've got for football. Where I had a great game that Terry Bowden coached when uh, Auburn went in and beat the Gators in the swamp. That's the last time they've beaten Florida. And here comes Grossman on the quarterback draw just moving the clock down now and uh, so here it is Steve Spurrier's senior class will win its first SEC championship ring the only senior class he'd ever had without a ring they had one last chance and they were determined to get it and Steve just kind of looking at that clock up there saying come on 513 move and let's start thinking about New Orleans you know one thing Steve's got to be concerned about injuries that defensive line those fellows like Brown and Warren but he's got a lot of time got a lot of time before the uh, January 2nd game at the Nokia Sugar Bowl so we get them healthy Auburn will regroup they've got a tough one against Michigan uh, they'll find out that Drew Henson can move the ball down the field on him pretty good, too. And Michigan's got some nice receivers also. You that, bet. that Auburn will have a tough time. Yeah, you bet. And 
and uh, Carter is down. And uh, time permitting, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report featuring scores and highlights from a from across the country. And uh, Jerry, I guess uh, the old school Northwestern gonna go off to the Alamo Bowl, and they'll find out tomorrow who. Who they play, I'm sure your son and uh, right. and all the players on that team are excited about. Can I going can to I ball. expense this trip? It should have been <laughs> should have been Florida. Could have drove there. It's cost me five grand. It's like a whole family. You know I expense? <laughs> Warren Matthews or whoever. Please, what happened here? Second down. They should be in Florida. Here's Klein going oh, deep, oh. incomplete. <laughs> and uh, Ratliff will have tied up there and. Uh, a little pushing going on down there, and we get, we get folks separated. And no need for that. Just bring the 427 to a close and go on a bunch of business. There's our first and ten line, and uh, brought to you by Pacific Life. And you go back to the first half, folks, and the story: the turnovers. Auburn turned it over on the first play from scrimmage, yep. and the Gators went down and struck for a touchdown. Then Florida was driving for a tie, or I should say Auburn, for the tying touchdown. They turn it over to Florida again. Three turnovers, and that's it. Here's third down. Underneath to Daniels, and uh, he may have got it the first down. Yep. He got it. That's the 38th time they've passed. Both teams have passed that first down mark of the day. 38 first downs, 20 for Florida, 18 for Auburn in this game. Both teams able to move the ball. Florida's put over 450 yards, 432 yards of offense. Yep. So, uh, Brad and Bob will be happy to note that uh, the Gators are bringing the clock down. They'll get oh, this maybe yeah. on time out oh, there. Put your makeup on, guys. Yeah. You're going to get on. When you, when you, you want <laughs> it, you want it on time, and you want to get it moving, especially in cold weather games out there in uh, Kansas City. Three man rush now, three men against Klein here on uh, first down. And uh, intercepted. Shepard picks it off for the Gators. That's the fourth Auburn turnover of the game and the second interception for Shepard. The sophomore corner from Jacksonville and number three was a teammate of number 10's, Jabbar Gaffney. Yeah. What a high school team that must have been you with bet. those two fellows. That speed all over the field. McIntyre, number 81, I believe, is the guy. The ball went right through his hands. Klein comes up the pocket, wide open, hits him right in the face. Boom. Right to number three. That's as easy to get it. And Tommy just shook his head and says, guys, what are we doing here? Now, regardless of what happens in the Nokia Sugar Bowl, Florida now can consider this season a success. Had they lost another SEC championship game, that was not going to be the case. And as far as Tuberville is concerned, it is still a successful year, even though they're going to come up empty here and they didn't play well. They're going to move on to the Citrus Bowl. They won the SEC West. They're ahead of schedule. Gillespie's in now to run the clock out. And Lincoln brings him down at the 44-yard line. And uh, speaking to the BCS, now tomorrow you can join John and Terry. They'll reveal the teams going to the FedEx Orange Bowl to play for the national championship. They'll have all the other BCS Bowl matchups. The Tostitos Bowl Championship Series selection show tomorrow live at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ABC, and then... Uh, Everybody can get the poison of the typewriters and the word processors out, and we can have a go at it. Yeah, well, it still makes the regular season a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah, and I, it'll be interesting now to see where Miami gets to present its case. Whether they do wind up in the uh, FedEx Orange Bowl or they wind up in the Nokia Sugar Bowl or whatever. Toss play now. Here comes Gillespie. I'll tell you right now, Gary, that if they draw the Gators in that game, that's going to be a tough game. It that's going to be, be a very good football yeah, game. Yeah, it would be an interesting comparison. So if Miami went out and spanked the Gators, obviously that's not that easy to do, they would be a great claim because they could say, listen, we beat them, you beat them at home, Florida, and then we beat you. Oh, yeah. So that would be a listen, great match. If they don't make it to the FedEx Orange Bowl, believe me, the Associated Press writers are just drooling over the possibility of having a split championship. No question about it. Third down. Rex is going to take that clock all yeah, the way take down. It right down inside of five. Here's Gillespie, and uh, we want to thank the folks who made it all possible. 
this season and here tonight the executive producer of ABC Sports Howard Camps the executive producer of ABC's college football John Filippelli director of production Bob Toms the coordinating producer and the producer of this afternoon's game Bob Goodrich our director Larry Camp the technical director Monty Poli the associate producer Mitch Green the associate director Scott McGrath production manager Scott Silverman technical manager Mark Tower special thanks to Ross Malloy and David Fowler the Y man of notes and to Craig Rothberg and up here of course at the booth Roger Riley and Brian Mobison here comes Ryan Spons they'll let it roll dead 107 and the Florida Gators will have another championship see uh, Steve Spurrier put the Gore-Tex jacket on see he, he felt this was coming and, and now that's a smart guy and a golfer add. he just reached out he said I can feel it I got the eyes in the back of my head there it is and, uh, and finally a big smile if nothing else relief uh, for the Gators snap again and incomplete right down the middle and today's Chevrolet players of the game no surprise here Rex Grossman 17 to 26 and there you see Ontarius Thomas what and Thomas with a dozen tackles today standing tall for that defense out there and coming up with one big play we threw out it was a dimpled vote for Evans on the part of Gary Daniels. I, I could not just see. Petitioned. I could not see daylight when I held it up. I have just petitioned <laughs> N. Sanders Sauls, the uh, circuit court judge. We're going to hear this one over. Evans, Evans, you're the man. Whoa. And here he comes, charging out. As Auburn is unable to score a touchdown here today, and Grossman has been selected overall as the MVP of the SEC championship presented by Dr. Pepper. He is the first freshman to win that honor. And again, four touchdown passes here today, three of them in the first half as the Gators ran off to a 21-0 lead and turnovers plagued Auburn throughout this game. They turned it over four times and Grossman made them pay. And Auburn coming up with another completion that Marcel Willis sophomore receiver from Jacksonville and that's going to do it this senior class wins a ring easy on the coaches back <laughs> and uh, the Florida Gators have won the SEC championship and they're on the road to New Orleans seniors on this Florida team they might lose a couple juniors but they got a lot of talent coming back next year also and still some things to be decided in that Oklahoma Kansas State game which is uh, coming up next coach Tuberville won the West and there it is number one Oklahoma We'll put it on the line tonight in a chilly Kansas City. A night game outdoors. They'll be coming up right after this as the Gators of Florida. Huge relief. Huge win for this program after their performance in Tallahassee against Florida State. And now they get to go back to a major bowl. And let's check in with Jack and Rue. Jack. Yeah. Well, Coach, congratulations. Oh. You delivered that ring to those seniors. I tell you, this is one of the best. They're all good, but this is one of the best because we hadn't done it in four years. Yeah. So uh, really proud of this team. This maybe not as, as talented as the 95 and 6 bunch, uh, but they won eight out of nine conference games. So they did something marvelous. Now, the $13 million question is who do you want to face in that Nokia Sugar Bowl? Oh, we're not. We're going <laughs> to celebrate winning the SEC. That bowl game. We're happy to go to New Orleans, but this is much more important winning our conference championship. Congratulations, Coach. Thanks. Coach Steve Spurrier, you better believe he's happy about this one. He was uneasy about this game and all week long, and they come up big, 28-6. So Florida wins the title, and stay tuned now for number one Oklahoma versus Kansas State in the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship. ABC Sports Online, ESPN.com, keyword ABC, college football.
Now back to New York with John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Take it away, John. All right, Brent, thanks a lot. A great job in the game there in Auburn. Again, comes up short against Florida. They got pounded by them the first time, made some adjustments, but not enough. No, Auburn had to stay. Auburn had to stay close to them into the second half. For Auburn to win, they had to get the ball to Rudy Johnson in the second half. They got so far behind that they could not afford to run the ball in the second half. And then they had the big turnovers early. Two of them led to big touchdowns. Johnson actually ran the ball better in the first game, got over 100 yards in that one. He was well under today. Now, for Florida, again, you have to really take your hat off to Steve Spurry to get this team back there. He lost his chance at a national championship. They look so bad in that game against your dad's Florida State team. But how dominating is this for Florida? Since they went to this SEC championship game, Florida's been in there seven times and won five. No one else is even close. Well, Alabama and Tennessee can talk, maybe Auburn, but Florida has been the dominant team. Steve Spurrier has been the dominant coach. His team has won four of the nine SEC championship games. There's been no coach since Bear Bryant to be as dominant as Steve Spurrier. All right, 28 to 6 is the final. Florida over Auburn. They are headed to the Nokia Sugar Bowl, so the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fall in together. Stay with us as we head towards the Big 12 championship game.